Hello, ladies and gentlemen. This is another beautiful day that we are enjoying here in Boston, Massachusetts. Uh, a good day to have this kind of conversation. Conversations, I have promised to you on this TJK channel, one-on-one -on -one with TJK, where we bring you ordinary people doing extraordinary things in the world. And today, ladies and gentlemen, we are blessed and privileged to host somebody who has hosted me before on her podcast. We'll talk about that, co-hosting. We had thought originally we would post what we had talked about was geared towards the audience she focuses on. But today she agreed to come back and have a conversation with me. So help me welcome Ange Bad. Thank you. Says, yes. Mother, wife, daughter, auntie, and a woman who is out to change the world, one other woman at a time. Welcome, Ange. Please tell us a little bit about yourself, and we'll get into this conversation. Great. Well, thank you, Jackson. I really appreciate this opportunity and the invitation to sit down with you and have a conversation. Um, yeah. I born in North Carolina. I'm 54 years old. I'm married. I have two grown children. And about 10 to 12 years ago, I started coaching women specifically um, who wanted to break out of old patterns in their life. And when yeah. I was growing up, my own mother suffered from depression and ended up taking her own life in 2006. So that's really why mental health is so important to me. That's women... So Yes, women finding their own inner strength is yeah. hugely inspirational to me and a really powerful driver in what I do and the work that I do with women and all people, but I tend to focus um, my work aspect on women and just being of service in the world as much as I can. Very good. Go back before you started all this work and may God bless you and may mom rest in peace. Uh, that's a big loss that continues Thank you. on. Breathing does not end. So, yes. Thank a few you. Seconds for mom. Mm -hmm. Where were you born and raised? So, I was born in Charlotte, North Carolina, and mm -hmm. was raised in that area um, on out in the country where I had access, I had a lot of access to nature and I grew up as an only child. And so mm -hmm. I had, yeah, a lot of access to nature. I spent so much time outside, um, you know, really speaking with the animals and the trees and all the nature that was surrounding me. And I had a friend nearby um, who had a barn and she had horses and so we would ride horses and just be outside all the time. And so it was a great childhood. Wow, you are the only child. See, I love these interviews. I get, I know you already, we've known each other for so many years, but up to this day, I didn't know you were the only child. Mm -hmm. You grew up in nature. You played in bands and horses. That sounds like Kenyaka village where I grew up. Mm -hmm. Who were your biggest influences growing up? Mentors? Why did you stay in school? That kind of thing. Teachers who touched your life while you were younger? I would still say nature is, was one of my biggest teachers and continues to be. Mm -hmm. um, just being in the natural world and learning from the earth and the elements um, and all that the Mother Earth has to share with us and teach us. And in human form, uh, I did have a couple of teachers who supported me in ways that teachers normally didn't, or in my experience, te teachers didn't. They, you know, they were coming from this, do what I say, don't do anything wrong place, right? <laughs> and I was an only child. I was very shy. I didn't want to make any mistakes. I didn't want to do anything wrong. So that was a lot of pressure. Yeah. And... Um, it caused a lot of tension sometimes, but I did have a couple of teachers, um, one specifically in eighth grade and then another one in high school that were able to, as I say it, get in the pool with me, mm -hmm. not just push me off the diving board and say, learn how to swim, but they would get in the pool with me and help and support 
and walk shoulder to shoulder with me mm. instead of that, you know, face to face kind of I'm superior, you're inferior type of thing. And so, and what's possible in a mentor relationship, what's possible in a teacher student relationship, because I'd never experienced anything like that before. So those were, those were um, wonderful mentors for me in my life. Very good. Then you met your lovely husband, Scott. Talk a little bit about meeting Scott, the family you've built, and then we jump into the podcast you do that has changed so many women's lives around the world. Right. Yeah, so Scott and I met, uh, we were young, I was 23. <laughs> we got married when I was 25. We were babies. And we have stayed together. We've been together for 30 years. Um, this December will be our 29th wedding anniversary. So, wow, yeah. it's just, that's a big deal. So, um, <laughs> that's, that's a big deal. Yeah, and we have two children. One, our son is 23, our dog, extraordinary. And they will actually um, be with us this weekend as we are getting ready to run the marathon. Yeah. Um, so yeah, that's our that's our family life, and and Scott and I are both coaches. So he's an executive coach, and I still do my coaching, and we really work at our relationship. We put a lot of attention on our on all parts of our relationship, and uh, try to be as you know as honest and open as we can be at all times, and and put in the work. You are both coaches, coaching different things. And we'll talk about a little bit about also uh, Scott's coaching, executive coaching. Yours is called Midlife Magic and My Head. Yes. <laughs> yes. Whoa. What a title, number one. But also looking through different podcasts you've hosted, 29 now, and the information packed in this. I wish we had time to go one by one and unpack them but we'll direct people who are listening here to go and find them and listen to them. You did touch a little bit, uh, the passing of your mom was part of why you started to do this, this coaching and this podcast. Expound a little bit more about that and what you are seeing out there in this world, crazy world we live in. And it is some world. crazy world, yeah. Um, well, my my mom passed when she was 59. And so as I have started my own aging process and I'm 54 now, mm. I, st I started having really deep um, as we get into our late, 40, late 40s and early 50s and enter this middle stage of life. Yeah. And, and I just didn't find a lot of information out there. What I did find was very kind of flat and normalized and medical but not even a full medical picture and that wasn't what i was looking for i was looking for the juice i was looking for where life exists what is our place because we have so much wisdom at this point and we're not done we still have a long ways to go yes. but at this point we do have things that we can share we still have energy we still have vitality and we we uh, we get to this place where we're not quite, sometimes we get not quite sure what to do with it. So mm -hmm. starting the podcast was a way for me to have conversations with other people, um, mostly women, but I have had men as yourself on the podcast too, because we can learn from everywhere and everyone. <laughs> yes. So I wanted to have these conversations to allow women to see the full spectrum of life in all the different areas. There's all sorts of different possibilities. We tend to, and sometimes as we age, we can narrow our perspective and things get really tight and small. Mm. I wanted to be able to provide a lens to open up the possibilities and for women to ask questions, maybe they didn't know that they needed to ask or they hear something that really resonates with them that they hadn't put their finger on before and just have really interesting uncommon conversations that I hadn't heard out there. So that's why I started the podcast. Very good and unique in a way because I've had also authors and therapists and social workers. Uh, in fact, Nancy Correa out of New York wrote an exhausted, an exhausted woman. Uh, mm. talking about issues related to women. You go deeper. 
uh, in subjects about sex and uh, uh, how to keep your body and how to relate to your husband, you and Scott have done one together and educating us in the world. I'm divorced, so some of these things I see, I'm like, ooh, there is a future one time <laughs> in life. But God, deeper, why did you open it up way beyond the norm? Eat health, exercise, run. You're a marathon runner. You're about to run the second one, which is the next thing you're going to talk about. But you go deeper into the inside of a woman, the relationship beyond what people would go searching somewhere else in an open, frank, and um, energizing way. There's so much information out there about health about mental health, physical health, wellness. I mean, you know, we're inundated with all of that at this point. Like you can throw rock and find anybody talking about any of those health topics. One of the things that we typically don't talk about is sexual health. Yes. And if we're talking about a whole human system, we have to include sexual health in this whole human system because that's how we all got here. <laughs> so, <Okay>. to, <laughs> so to not talk about it seems a little bit strange. And especially for women, um, in my age group, in this middle stage of life, and to really open up these conversations around your body, around pleasure. So many of us have just been shut down in these areas for so long mm. um, because we were busy, right? The whole busy atmosphere of, you know, being a young person and, and, and you know, maybe meeting someone and having children having a career and we tend to think about these things until all of a sudden at this stage of life this flood of questioning comes up around everything what am i doing do i want sex this isn't the sex i want i've been having the same sex for 25 years i don't want this anymore like so many different things can come up and really teaching women and couples around these areas that there's so much more involved than what we've been taught we have not been taught anything about our eroticism and when i say eroticism i mean life force energy exactly not yes. just sexuality this is life force and so how to tap that how to harness it um and it can be in a multitude of ways anything from sitting in meditation to running to being in conversation to pleasure and sexuality so there's a wide range of things and if we don't include our natural erotic essence. And if we don't include sexuality, we're missing a huge chunk of tapping that vital life force energy. And at this age, we actually have more opportunity and, and can go deeper and wider into these spaces than ever before. Because a, an adult human female body is the most energetic, powerful force on the planet. <laughs> so that's, that's what I teach people. Like, let's go. Let's go. Let's do it. And you can sign up for one day immersion. You can sign up for three months or six months. The website is down in the uh, comments and we'll make sure we share it with everybody. The year you turned 50, you made a decision you are going to run in New York Marathon, celebrate your 50 years of living on this earth, but you ran it for a cause that is dear to me and dear to you, the children and grandmothers in the Nyaka area that we serve. Thank you for doing that. Mm, it is my bed. honor and pleasure. Scott was supposed to run with me in 20th, 50th anniversary of New York in 2022 because COVID affected us in uh, 2021. And this year, you and Scott are both running together. You've been training. One, why run an entire marathon for a charity? I'm asking you a rhetorical question. <laughs> Two, why Nyako? Running a marathon is a challenge. It's a way to push yourself. I initially wanted to run the marathon to face a a, a very large fear I had, and I won't, we don't need to go into that story, but, um, but I had a, a, a fall and a very large fear of something like a physical fall. 
Yes. And I wanted to do things that would have me face that fear. And it was something that I had to, it was big and something that I would have to do every day. And knowing you and having met you and having um, been at the race in 2018 and hearing what NACA was all about, it, it wasn't even a thought for me because even though I haven't had direct experience yet of going to Uganda and being in the village with the children and meeting the grandmothers, um, the story itself and meeting you as the demonstration of what is going on there was all I needed because it really put it, it put forward so much what one man with a vision can do, what one person with a vision can do. And yes, now it takes a lot of yes. people. It takes the whole wow. To, um, you know, the organization and it's exactly it's 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 more than one but it started with one it started as you say it started with a fifth of a pencil it That's started cool. with one man's vision and when we in our crazy world when we stop and think to ourselves what can i do what can i do as one person that's how i feel about being involved with niaka like yes it might be across the world from me but we're all one and we are all on this planet together we are all connected in my belief we're all connected and it's part of my vision of being of service. It's part of my vision of helping women and the grandmothers who are crones and have so, you know, crone as in a stage of life yes, crone yeah. for a woman. Yeah. Like, so being in that stage and really it's supporting them to give back and to supporting them to be of service and then help these children grow into, um, you know, be educated and provide healthcare and all the things that NACA does. And it's just an extraordinary organization. And knowing you personally is what has me get up every day and train and go to the marathon and take those steps because I know what it's doing and I know where it's going and I know who it's for. Thank you, thank you. And in 2018, when you ran, you had you also supporting a good friend of yours, a family friend, Mark Simra, who ran in uh, energy renewable shoes. Sandals. I've I, run the marathon a few times. Run it in the sandals, that's a different challenge altogether. But now you are training with your husband and you are going to run this race together. Are you going to be taught, taught together side by side? Are you planning to take off and leave him behind? You are the <laughs> the veteran uh, of the marathon now. How is that going to look like on Sunday? <laughs> yeah, so I am not fast. <laughs> But that's okay. Like, no, my my daughter, our daughter is also running. She's 21. <laughs> yes. So they are probably going to be more toe to toe. My husband and my daughter, they'll probably be about the same speed. I will be somewhere behind them <laughs> for okay. sure. And that's okay. Like, I don't need to be fast. Um, no. I go at my own pace. All you have to do is finish the rest. So it is a family right. day at this time. We will see you in New York. And we thank you so much for choosing to run for Nyaka. We thank you for choosing the mental health and subject and sex and eroticism for women, midlife women. I come from an area where many women don't have these resources. And now I'm going to ask the young people who, who will be listening to this to explain to the midlife women in Nyaka village in a local language what this whole podcast is about and the information you share. I have a question I've asked every single person we have hosted here. If you were, if you can go back to when you were 18 years old, what advice would you give your 18 year old self? Just go. Just go. Just go. Whatever idea you have, just go. You're going to have fear. You're going to be afraid. Do it anyway. Just have fear as your companion, not as your adversary. Mm. And just go. You can always course correct later. If you make a decision and you want to make a different decision, make a different decision. But just go. Don't let anything get in your way. Perfect. That's that, that's great advice uh, for young people. But for anybody else, we are all young in one way or the other. And this, uh, these advices collected will guide many of us. Ladies and gentlemen, we promise you, bring you people. You will learn, you will unlearn, and you will relearn. And today we got the privilege to share just a little bit, but 
Is there something I didn't ask you that you would like to talk about before we end? Oh my gosh. Um <laughs> open space. Open space. Yes. Ah. You know, I think it really is kind of piggybacking on what we just said and and why I wanted to run the marathon in the first place, you know, just facing fear. Yes. Face the fear. Do something every day. We're all going to be afraid at some point about something and and don't be afraid to face it. Don't be afraid to put on your wading boots and go into the swamp and face the fear and come out the other side because you'll be so much stronger and um have so much gratitude for this beautiful life that we get to live. That's right. The Angie Bad the podcast is available on Apple or Spotify or wherever you listen. Midlife magic and mayhem coaching available and if you are an executive and you are looking for coaching Scott Bad same last name also does coaching they are both running on Sunday November 5th and their 21 year old daughter all running in New York marathon to support women and children in Nyaka village and grandmothers while they are running We have a group of people who in Uganda who be running in solidarity we've done this every year and I thank you so much for sparing time I thank you so much for running for the children and grandmothers and I thank you so much for starting a podcast that helps all women and men in mid life right there and thank you for hosting me on that podcast I will see you Friday and I'll see you Sunday I will cheer so hard we'll be waiting for you on every stop to cheer and encourage you inspire me so much and I thank you for doing this mm, thank you Jackson thank you for who you are in the world it's a pleasure thank you thank you <laughs>